Today we're gonna talk about how you can apply the principles of You Can't Hurt Me to Your Life by David Goggins. The first principle is to face your bad hand. We're all born in a certain way. We have our gifts and our weaknesses. We're born with different genes which are best for different fields and we could be born on any part of the world. Of course, we might not be born genius or born good-looking but we can do something. We can take advantage of it by addressing our weaknesses and working on them. For example, if you're born in a third world country like the Philippines, it might not have a prosperous economy just like the United States, but it has a lot of problems. In an entrepreneurship, problems drive innovation, problems drive businesses. And if you're not good at sports, I'm sure you also have a gift in other areas of your life. For example, you're good at academics or you're good at business. We all have unfair advantages in our life. We have different gifts, different genetic codes. So it's up to you on how to deal with your bad hand. The damaging way you can either Either use it to your advantage or use it as an excuse because some people compare themselves to others like this person is good at sports and I'm not because I'm short oh, oh but, but he's dumb but he's dumb so it's okay it's okay oh he's got a lot of money but I got a lot of women see all the negativity that flows to your mind it won't get you anywhere you're still the same guy still not progressing in life instead focus that energy on you on what you can improve instead of looking out and onto the lives of other people you should spend your mental energy on learning different things to improve your life in the past six months, I was always comparing myself to people that are born wealthy. And I thought about what if I was born wealthy and I might have a shortcut on my success because maybe wealthy parents would teach you how to manage money well and use their network and a lot of stuff. But there's a certain book that actually helped me with this mentality. It's called David and Goliath. It's a story of the battle between David, a young shepherd, he was short, versus Goliath, the giant warrior that can withstand any guy in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So. When the war began, to end further casualties, they would set up a duel. Duel between two mightiest warriors. And that would decide the winner of the war. So, the other side picked Goliath. He's a super huge guy, but no one would face him. And here's a young shepherd named David. He went, fuck it, I'll fuck this guy. So the king offered him armor and weapons. He said, I don't need it. Because he knows that he's a shepherd. He's not a warrior. So he grabs his sling. As shepherds, they're good at slinging rocks. So he grabs it, runs towards Goliath, and swings it super fast and throws it. it it hit so hard in Goliath's head, he instantly became unconscious. So David grabbed Goliath's sword and sliced his head. How did David defeat Goliath? It's because a giant like Goliath have poor vision, poor mobility, and he's a huge target. That's why all of us are born each with advantages and weaknesses. And each weakness can be turned to an advantage, and each advantage can be turned to a weakness. That's why when I was comparing myself against people with wealthy parents, I didn't realize that if I wasn't born wealthy, then I'd have more drive and the journey would be more fun because I've proved to myself that I did it all by my own and it's like what they call a Ferrari going 200 miles an hour if your light's already on 200 miles an hour you won't feel it but you will notice it if you came from 0 to 200 miles an hour it's the acceleration that makes it fun and the second principle of David Goggins book is to have an accountability mirror which would put his goals in the mirror or affirmations in the mirror so every time he looks at it he remembers his goals and he starts to visualize himself i can relate this to with my habit tracker because when you're starting to build or take out a bad habit you won't have accountability especially if you're doing this with yourself so having a habit tracker is vital to keeping yourself accountable and being consistent for example here so I'm tracking my exercise, meditation, journal, not eating sugar, and not playing video games. He also talks about the importance of visualization. There's a lot of books and people that talk about visualization. The thing about visualization is that it gives you confidence because you've visualized that you've already did it. So it gives you confidence and it opens your mind to possibilities and opportunities about that thing. It would also give you a mental practice or a simulation of what it takes to do that because there was this study comparing a guy that practiced basketball and the guy that thought about basketball at the end of the day they almost had the same progress the guy that imagined basketball just had small gaps in their progress and the third principle of you can't hurt me is you should pursue discomfort because pain grows more when it's not addressed 
So how can we relate it to our lives? For example, if you're overweight, the more you don't address your diet and your physical activity, the more you gain weight every year, like mental health. The more you use video games as a tool for escape, the more your mental health will deteriorate. And he also states that you should write all the things that would make you uncomfortable and make it like your to-do list. So before I was stepping out of my comfort zone, it felt so hard because the first thing in everything is the hardest. If I'd look back now, that thing before was nothing compared to the things that I do now. Now I eat with my boss regularly every Monday one on one and I'm like this 18 year old guy that if other people would look at me they'd be like who the fuck is this guy? He's 18 years old and he's having one on one lunch with my boss and I just felt so comfortable because of all the things I took before. All the discomfort that I faced. So talking to a person like my boss just became second nature. And the first principle of you can't hurt me is that you should always over deliver. Over deliver on everything when it comes to exercise to diet and to doing your work he also talks about how you can use negativity to dominate i can relate this to some principles too that you should use aggression and negativity to use as your fuel as your force to win just like the book relentless and how michael jordan became successful he used his dark side to power through games where he was sick and he said that the best way to earn someone's respect is through hard work that's why people with with great bodies gain a lot of respect because it's hard to do that you need to constantly go to the gym every day you need to eat right and you need to have the discipline to go through the mental chatter every day a fifth principle of you can't hurt me is that visualize yourself having the end goal already that you've already hit the finish line because it will help you to gain confidence because you will start acting as if you're already successful you'll have the mental models of a champion one way you can take this a step further is to visualize your whole journey one step at a time so you can like simulate what would happen if you do this then this can help you exercise your brain so you'll be ready when the time comes and the sixth principle of you can't hurt me is to look back on what you've done to keep you going because sometimes when life hits hard you might want to give up you ate a lot of sugar in a party your mind might start getting addicted to sugar the next day just like what happened to me but when you look at the progress that you did when you reflect back on your habit tracker you can see that there was a month that you didn't consume any sugar and if you did that you can surely easily do it again and the seventh principle is how to manage your time so he states that in the first week you need to track everything when do you work what time does it end how much time do you take to prepare and what do you do afterwards how much time do you spend on facebook when do you spend on facebook so it gives you data on what happens to your day and you'll be surprised on how much time you spend on your phone it's like when I was when I started tracking it and he said that you should try to lock pass in 15 to 30 minute blocks so that you'll always have things to do just like what Grant Cardone did he filled up all the 15 minute chunks in his schedule so that he'll be busy enough to not even think about drugs and after you did first step and the second step you can now create a schedule that is right for you and the eighth principle of you can't hurt me is to always push your limits just like what happened to my surgery my wisdom teeth surgery I was almost about to give up on the first tooth but when I stuck through it and it was finished I realized that it wasn't that bad after all and how your mind would instantly limit your capacity even though you could do so much the ninth principle of you can't hurt me is that you should go the extra mile it's the same as over deliver but the difference of over deliver and going the extra mile is that over deliver is when you're given a task and you do more of it that the person who gave you the task is blown away but going the extra mile is you finishing the task and doing something that you were not tasked to do for example if you're on the front desk of a hotel your job is to book the rooms of the hotel you can go the extra mile and greet them thank them and the tenth principle of you can't hurt me is that how to use failure david Goggin said that if you're not failing it means that you're not setting your goals high enough which means failure leads to success it means that you're taking the right path just like the book the obstacle is the way by ryan holiday you should think that failure is part of success without failure you can never achieve success in fact you should always learn from your failure because nothing can teach you more from experiences and failures and the last thing that david Goggin said is don't stop when you're tired stop when you're done and i hope this video was enough to get you started